Hi everybody, it's Barbara and welcome back to my channel. Today I have three high-end Dollar Tree farmhouse DIYs for you and we're going to get started on our first project. We're going to be using one of these plastic garden fences from Dollar Tree and I wanted to remove those top corners so I'm just going to make a mark with my pencil to determine how I want this to look at the top. And then I'm going to take my ruler and draw a straight line across those tabs on the side so I'll know where to score those. I took a sharp utility knife and went in and scored the bottom parts of the fence and then came in with my scissors and trimmed that down. I thought that the scissors would give me a little bit more of a closer cut, but you could certainly cut those with the utility knife. I cut the other one as well. And then I'm going to come in on the side where those two tabs are, and I'm actually going to score it on the top. I don't want to cut it all the way through because if I cut this off, it's going to leave a hole there. Then I'm going to come in on the back part of it and kind of cut a slit on those two sides of the tabs, and then I'll be able to push that piece over and then it'll be nice and flush on the side and you won't have these two gaping holes. So once I get that pushed over, I can go over and do the exact same thing to the bottom one. And here you can just see that I'm going to score it on the outside so that I'll be able to bend that over and get that nice and flush. Then I can go in and cut those tabs off with my scissors. And then I can go in with some hot glue and add that to the inside, which will be the back part of the fence to hold that in place. Then on the other side of the fence, it has these tabs that connect these fencings together. And you can just cut that off with your utility knife and it won't leave any holes. You can just cut it nice and flush. For that top part that I want to remove, this is the back part of the fence. So I'm going to draw a line a little bit higher than the actual top part of that curve of the fence. Because if I cut these off at the line that I drew on the front, I realized that it was going to give me a gap at that top rim. So what I'm going to do is take the, my utility knife on the back side of the fence and cut that down until I'm able to remove that top portion. And you'll see in just a minute what I mean by leaving a little bit extra at the top so that you can push that over. I'm going to take my pencil and then draw the line where I need to fold it over at or bend it over. And then I'm going to take my utility knife and score over that. I don't want to go all the way through the plastic. I just want to score it enough so that I could take my pliers and bend that over so that now it'll have that top piece just like the other part of this arch. Then I'm going to go in with some hot glue and glue that in place. Because this is some pretty thick plastic, it really did not want to hold it in place just by itself. So I'm going to take that bottom piece that I cut off of the fence and glue that in there so that it will have something to attach to. And I'll just put a good amount of hot glue there in between those and hold it in place and then add a little bit of glue at the bottom part of that so it will stay in place. And then you're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So once I got that bottom piece in, holding that top piece in, I realized that those side pieces were going to stick out a little too far. So when I hang it on the wall, it would have one side sticking out further than the other. So I just cut those down flush. And now it is ready for me to paint. I'm going to go in with some... Waverly Antique Wax. So I wanted to create the outside part of it to look like wood. If I had this to do over again, I would paint this entire piece with some white chalk paint to give it a nice base because the wax does not want to stick to plastic. I was going for that wood grain look, so I was taking my cloth and kind of wiping it to give it more of like a grain effect. But as I was doing that, it was basically just wiping the wax off. So I went ahead and continued putting that first coat on thinking, well, I'll let it dry and see how it looks and see if the wax is going to come off. Well, after it dried, it didn't really look the way I wanted it to look. 
So I do go back in with a second coat, and with the second coat, I do not wipe it off. I just leave it on there. So if you put the chalk paint on as a base, then or maybe some Mod Podge on as a base, then you would only have to put one coat on there. I did make sure that I got those inside edges as well, so it looks like one wood piece all the way around. I did get a little bit of wax on the plastic, so this is after the wax has dried, and it wiped off very easily, so that made me think that the wax was gonna come off the outside. So I went in with some Mod Podge, and I painted over the entire portion that I put all of that wax on. And then because I did not paint it to begin with, I am going to go over all of those white sections because this is a matte finish Mod Podge and it's gonna make it look less like plastic and more realistic. So this is how it looks after it's dry and it is so beautiful. I am loving how this arch is turning out. I'm going to create a swag to go at the bottom and I'm using some eucalyptus from Walmart and I've just cut the stems off of the bundle and I'm gonna put three of those stems on each side going in opposite directions. I'm going to attach these stems using some Dollar Tree floral wire and what I like to do is just take the second stem and overlap the first one right there at the bottom part of the stem and then wrap my floral wire around there really tightly. So if you're going to recreate this, I would leave that extra floral wire on there and not cut it off like I just did because you'll need that to attach it to your archway. I ended up having to use extra floral wire because I cut all my pieces off and if I had left it on there, I could have just attached it. I did the exact same thing on the other side with the other three going in the opposite direction. And then I'm just gonna hold that up there to make sure I have it the length I want and to determine where I need to connect the two pieces in the middle. And then I could just overlap those and attach it again with some floral wire. Then I could take this now and attach it to the archway and I'm attaching it at the bottom of each of those diamonds. So if you left that extra floral wire on there, you can skip this step where I'm having to add this extra on there. Once I have all of that in place, I'm gonna create a bow to go right in the center. You don't have to create a bow. You could leave it just as it is. You can use whatever kind of ribbon you like. I am using some Buffalo Check ribbon from Hobby Lobby. And to create my bow, I just create a loop about the size that I want, and then I'll create another loop at the bottom the same size, and then I'll go around to the side and do that again, creating a loop at the top and the bottom, and continue that until I have three loops on each side. Then I will squeeze it really tightly in the middle, and then take a piece of floral wire and go around that and twist it in the back really tightly to cover up the floral wire and to give it a little bit more of a finished look. I'm going to take a smaller piece of that ribbon and I am going to glue it into thirds. So I'm just going to fold it over about halfway, glue it down, and then repeat that. And then I can glue this around my bow and it'll give it that nice finished look. Then you can attach your bow to the center of your swag with either hot glue or some floral wire. And I'm gonna fluff that bow out nice and pretty. I'm gonna attach mine with some hot glue and let it sit for a minute. And I think that this turned out so beautiful. These real wood arches or MDF arches go for $40 or more online. And you can create your own that looks so gorgeous for a dollar from a Dollar Tree fence. You guys let me know what you think of project number one. For project number two, I will be using two of these wood round plaques from Walmart. And I think they were about a dollar a piece. And I'm also gonna be using some beads. I get my beads in this very large bag from Amazon, which I will have linked in my Amazon store in my um, description box below if you are interested. I'm going to take my hot glue and do one small section at a time. Now these 
wood plaques have a lip on them. So I'm going right there to the outside edge of that lip. And then I'm going to place each of my beads with the holes facing up so you don't see any of those. And I'm going to go all the way around in small sections so that my hot glue doesn't dry before I can add my beads on. Then I'm going to take that other wood round and put the glue right there at the lip all the way around this. And then I can set this right on top of those beads. And you guys, this thing is so beautiful. I am loving how it's looking already. I'm going to take one of Dollar Tree's candlesticks, glass candlesticks, and I'm going to give it a base coat of my Waverly White chalk paint. And I'm only going to put one coat on there and let it dry because I'm going to go back in after that dries with my antique wax. And I'm going to give this one good coat. I'm not going to wipe it off. I'm just trying to make it look like wood. And then I'm going to set that to the side and let it dry. And I'm going to put the same antique wax right on these um, wood rounds. Now to get down in those beads, I just found that it was easier to pounce the brush up and down to make sure you get inside all of those crevices and cracks. And then I am going to go back in with a cloth or you can go in with a paper towel and just smear that in and blend it in really nicely and it's going to give it that nice antique look. So I did this to the entire piece. Now you want to make sure when you add your beads you don't put a lot of extra glue on there because the wax will not stick to the glue and you really don't want to be able to see that extra glue. This is how it looks. I'm going to make sure they are dry before I attach the two pieces together. To attach them, I am going to use some E6000 and some hot glue. And I'm going to put four dots of E6000 opposite of each other because I do not like to mix my E6000 and hot glue together. For some reason, it just doesn't work well if you mix the two together. So that E6000 is going to give you that permanent long-term hold and the hot glue is going to give you that temporary hold. I'm going to place the top part of the candlestick to the bottom part of the wood and now we have this gorgeous riser. I think it turned out super cute. I'm going to use one of these metal buckets that I got from Dollar General for a dollar and I'm just going to place some extra eucalyptus stems that I have lying around in there and then I can place this right on top of that wood riser. And I think this turned out so gorgeous. I love this piece. It looks like a real antique wood piece. Let me know what you think of project number two. And these cute little buckets, we're going to be using a couple of more of these in different colors in project number three. We're going to start off with one of Dollar Tree's Valentine signs. I'm going to remove that burlap heart and then take some sandpaper and go over that section. So again, if I had this to do over, I would remove all of the paper from that because I really wanted to use that side so I could have those grooves in there, those indentions. I did give it a base coat of my Waverly White chalk paint and I did paint the entire piece. So while that's drying, I'm going to use some of these larger boxes from Dollar Tree and I'm going to use just the lids. I'm going to use three of those lids as well as some jumbo craft sticks from Dollar Tree. So I'm going to take six of those craft sticks, line those up, and then I can set my lid on top of that and then draw my lines for each side so I will know where to cut these. I like to go in with my utility knife and score each of those lines before I go in with my scissors and cut them because that's just going to help prevent it from splintering or splitting and cracking and you'll get a nice even cut. Then I'm going to take some hot glue and attach all six of these to the top part of this lid. Now I'm not too concerned about the design on the inside because you really won't see that. Then I'm going to take some sandpaper and go over those outside edges and you just want to make sure that you try to keep it as flush as possible when you're adding those craft sticks to the outside edges. I'm going to do the other two lids exactly the same way. 
This is how the sign looks after I have painted it one time. I'm going to go over it with my antique wax and I'm going to make sure that I get down in those indentions in the front. So this is what I mean when I said I wish I had removed the paper because I'm taking my cloth and I'm going in one long stroke to create that wood grain look. And as I am doing this, the L and the V and the E are bleeding back through. So I do go in with a second coat, but you can still see it, but it's okay. I mean, once we get this all put together, you really won't see it, but I just wish I had taken the paper off. I used the antique wax on all of those lids and I did go in on the inside just because you'll see that inside rim some, but you won't see that design. Then I took my tape measure and I marked two and a quarter inches and then nine and a half inches and then 16 and a quarter inches on both sides so that I would know where to place each of these trays. So I just used my ruler and lined it up where I'd already placed my markings and then I'm going to use my E6000 and hot glue and place these trays on top of the sign in those three sections that I had already marked. Once I have those in place to reinforce this, I am going to go in with my staple gun and put two staples in each of these to staple those trays to the sign. Once I have those in place, I am going to create a hanger for the back and I'm going to be using some of Dollar Tree's nautical rope and some hot glue and then I'm going to go in with just some extra ribbon that I have and put some hot glue and put that in place just to give it a little bit more security. Now these are some of those really cute buckets from Dollar General. They have white, black, navy blue, and the silver. These are so adorable for just a dollar a piece, and I love the fonts they have on them as well. Now you could use this shelf or this hanging sign we have in your craft room and put craft supplies in it. I am going to use mine and decorate it with some florals, and I'm going to use some of the green lavender and then some of the lavender with the blooms on it, and I believe these came from Walmart. I'm going to place those in the white buckets, and then I'm going to use this white hop clover, and I'm putting that in the black bucket, and these turned out so beautiful. I absolutely love how this turned out. I think I'll create another one so I can have two of them and then put them on opposite sides of like a centerpiece on the wall. You guys, if you have a favorite, I would love to know which one is your favorite. Please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. I truly do appreciate you. Please take care.